friend Story here for Gamer. They're at E3 2016, and uh, we will be talking about Warhammer 40k Dawn of War 3. That's right, finally. We're getting the third iteration. What, seven years ago that we got the, the second one? And I'm here with Brent, the campaign lead. Hello. Yes. So, first of all, the campaign is split into three different uh, factions, correct? Yeah, we're working, uh, we're telling a, the kind of epic campaign story that people, players expect, but from three perspectives. So the Space Marines, the Orcs, and the Eldar, each one of them has a representative, if you will, the, uh, the players can work with. Uh, Gabriel Angelos, for example, chapter master of the Space Marines, he's the guy we're seeing the Space Marine story from. And there are similar roles on the Orcs and the Eldar. Yeah. Now, now, of course, this is uh, an RTS made by Relic, just as uh, the originals. Um, in the first game, you didn't have uh, any hero units. You introduced them in the second one. You yep. continuing with, with this in the third one? Yeah, we're taking the, we, what we wanted to do was take those hero units from the second uh, Dawn of War, and introduce the large scale battles and the base building from Dawn of War One, and put them all together and with new mechanics to create a new special kind of secret sauce, if you will, for Dawn of War Three. Okay, but it's not just hero units. You also have like super elite units. That's correct, yeah. What we wanted to do was have uh, a variety of elite units that represented different powers, power to cost ratios. So something like Gabriel Angelos or the Assault Terminators that you saw in the demo, those are relatively low cost in terms of elites. Somebody like uh, in the Imperial Knight, driven by Lady Solaria, biggest unit we've ever had on screen, you know, in one of our battles, and so, but it's very costly. So it's sort of a late game uh, unit, if you will, elite that we, it takes you a while into the match before you can actually deploy her. And she's, her uh, power to cost ratio is great. Like it takes a long time to get her, but the damage she can do on the battlefield is awesome. Okay. Now we talk about the, the campaign here. Mm. Um, is, will there be some sort of online multiplayer component uh, in the game as well? I mean, are you thinking like a co-op or yeah, sorry? Yeah, co-op or, or multiplayer. Well, we're definitely doing a, a multiplayer component. Uh, we're not talking about it yet, but the mo the match stuff that we well, the multiplayer matches we're playing at work right now, they're a blast, and we can't wait to share more information about them with you all later in the year. Now we talked about uh, the hero units coming back from the second one, but you're also bringing in ba ba a bit more about the base building from the first one, kind of striking a balance there, right? Yeah, absolutely. What we want to do is create the opportunity for players to engage in spectacular battles with tons of units on the field. And the best way we felt to do that was to allow players to choose which units, which line units, they were gonna do that field on the battle. And uh, the best way to do that was to let players bring back, well, bring back base building. So players could choose which units they field, how they coordinate with the elite units. It's really interesting, there's lots of opportunities for different gameplay styles, even within the Space Marines, for example. You know, we call them the tip of the spear. They field the fewest units on the field of battle, they're also some of the most powerful. And the relationships between the line units like, you know, the assault marines with their jump packs, or the tactical marines when you upgrade them with flamers, uh, you know, devastators with las cannons that are good against vehicles or buildings or, you know, equipping them with heavy bolters, which are great against infantry. Take all those interesting line units that we showed in the demo and then sort of say, okay, well, you can only bring three elites into every mission, right, or into the multiplayer matches. Now I've got to build line units that suit the elites that were, that were fielding in, in, you know, from the player's perspective. So if they bring out Gabriel Angelos, early, early game unit in a, in a multiplayer match, he's great. He's a total uh, melee powerhouse, right? You need the kind of ranged units uh, support to keep him alive because he's tough, but he's not indestructible. So yeah, there's a lot of interplay between and it those. it takes some time to close the gap. Absolutely. Yeah. So the range units protect him to a degree, weaken the guys who are firing on him until he can come in there and really disrupt their lines. And you mentioned there are these big, spectacular battles. Mm -hmm. um, you, you've kind of been stri trying to strike a balance between getting the visuals um, you know, as great as possible, but also readability and, and, and people to understand what's going on in this melee. Yeah, absolutely. That's been one of our biggest goals. I mean. We looked at a lot of games when we were developing Dawn of War 3, and obviously we looked at MOBAs, right? And there's a lot to learn from MOBAs. Uh, one big takeaway we took away from it was clarity of gameplay. So moment to moment, you know what your hero is doing in a MOBA. And we wanted that same readability, that same clarity 
on the field of battle when, we're, when we are fielding a tremendous number of units. So we did that in a variety of ways. We did that in terms of the scale of the units, in terms of the visual effects, in terms of the colors, in terms of uh, just how the units look and their silhouettes. And we took all those things and they're all being done, that art direction is being sort of pushed forward in a way to serve the clarity of the battlefield. So when you do have that large scale battle, you feel like you can manage it. You're not just sort of reacting at piecemeal. Yeah. That's a big thing for us. Okay. Now, when will people actually be getting their hands on the game and uh, on what platforms? So we're making it for making Dawn of War 3 for PC and we're releasing in 2017. Uh, we're going to know more over the course of the year as to that specific release date, but yeah, that's what we've got right now. Any um, plans for a sort of beta or anything along those lines? Uh, you know what? We had a lot of success with doing beta testing with the community on Company of Heroes at Relic. Uh, you know, that would be something we, we're talking about, but we haven't made any plans yet. Okay. Yeah. So make sure to stay tuned to the website uh, for any announcements. Tune to the website for any further announcements. Yeah. Please. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you.